Okay, so today's episode, we've got a whole heap of shiny new parts to fit to the chassis. I kind of don't want to fit them. It looks too good, this table at the moment. But anyway, I thought I'd get them out. It's more of a bit of a wank factor for the video. Um, so I'm probably gonna box them all up anyway. So yeah, a bit of a dick wave there, apologies for that. Um, so yeah, we've got the Wheelwood uh, brake kit from Castle Main Rod Shop, so 320 uh, millimeter brake kit. We've got, yeah, drilled and slotted discs. We've got the Wheelwood master cylinder kit, so that'll delete the brake booster. Uh, we've got the Castle Main Rod Shop tubular control arm kit with the Viking fully adjustable shocks, coilovers. Uh, we've got the uh, McDonald's Brothers Racing four link kit with the Viking coilovers as well. So that's also got these cross members here to uh, weld in as well. And then we've also got the uh, transmission cross member. So this basically allows the your exhaust to hug up closer. So the old cross member, the original one, it sits pretty low and doesn't allow much room for the exhaust um, when you're mounting to the extractors. So this will um, basically, yeah, allow enough clearance there so you can have your exhaust hug up closer to the um, actual body. Okay, so I just thought I'd start with the easy part first. So just the transmission cross member from the Castle Main Rod Shop. So yeah, nice nice bit of gear that one. So I think it was about $190. So yeah, not too bad. So yeah, it gives it will give um plenty of clearance there for the for the exhaust. So just with the bolts as well, just put them from the top downwards and then have the nuts underneath. So that way if the nuts ever do come loose and drop out, the bolts can't actually fall out. So yeah, basically it should never go anywhere if the bolts are, are pointing downwards like that. So next step we'll be fitting the tubular control arm kit from Castle Main Rod Shop. So they've actually provided a pretty good instruction manual with photos on how to install the kit. So the first step will be cutting out these tabs in the coil spring pocket. So that's basically this part here and them tabs are to locate the springs. So if you can see up in there, um, I've already cut them out. So I already did that when I was outside before I painted the chassis. So yeah, that, that wasn't too bad. It's a little bit hard to get up in there, but basically I use this die grinder with a cut off disc um, that worked pretty well so I believe that's probably like the only modification you need to do to the chassis to fit this kit so not too bad okay so the next step is putting the coil over together so the coil comes the coil overs come with these nuts here so that's like your uh, locator nut or your adjusting nut on the spring this nut here is your locking nut so basically thread them all the way so you have to thread them from this side all the way down um, because you can't actually thread them from this side because you yeah, it won't actually slide over your two adjusters there. So basically thread the nuts on. You've got a washer that needs to go over there and then that just slips over the, lock, or the adjusting nut and then you can basically put your spring over like that and then this is your like upper locating washer, I guess you'd call it. Um, so then that basically slips in there and then that locks onto, locates onto the top there and then you can basically screw your adjusting nut all the way to what locates onto the bottom of the spring. Uh, and then that is all basically together now. Okay, so after putting the coil over, over together, you can basically mount it into this upper mount. So this kit comes with a couple of different bushes. Um, so basically you need to install the thicker one of the two. So this one here. So basically they need to be installed into, 
into there. Um, to do this, I just tap, tapped it in using this um, vise and just put the, sli uh, the bush over that and just tap it in with a hammer. So yeah, you need to do that obviously before you mount that into this upper mount. Okay, so I just forgot to mention before you thread the nuts on, so your lock nut and your adjusted nut, just apply some of these this anti-seize to the threads of the nuts. So anti-seize or never seize, um, I got this one from Repco, so yeah, either or. Okay, so ready to install the coilover now into the chassis. So basically, yeah, just check everything, make sure it's all located on the bottom and also located properly on the top here. And then, yeah, you can install it. So you'll see that there's a radius. I'll just get that to focus. There's a radius here, and then it's flat here. So you want the radius pointing outwards like that. Okay, so just like that, so basically bolt that goes into the top here and yeah, just need to tighten that up now. Okay, so I can start fitting the upper control arm. So I've just fitted the original bolts that mount the upper control arm. So just these, these uh, two bolts here. So you just basically clean them up and tap them in. It comes with these spaces, so I've just slid them on, but before I tap them in, it seems to be a, a bit of a tight fit but before I tap them in I'm just going to put these spaces so these are the original spaces that come out of it so I've marked them up so right hand front right hand rear so I'll put them um, back to how they were so I'm not sure whether the wheel alignment will be out or not but it's yeah I guess it's pace to just put it back to how they were and then when I do get a wheel alignment um, hopefully yeah they can just adjust the shims if need be okay so I've just slipped this upper control arm on so it basically slides over these two bolts here. Um, had to just tap it on with a hammer. So you just tap this area here and that went on pretty, pretty easily. And then you just use the existing bolts to tighten that on there. So just with the upper control arm has a D on there. So I'm no bloody genius, but I'm guessing that means driver's side um, because the other one has a a uh, P on it and I'm guessing that probably means passenger side. Okay I just had to take these bolts off again and I just forgot this bracket that goes on there that's for your brake valve. Um, so yeah just put that bracket on there so now I can fit the lower control arm so apparently just got to grease up these bushes here so I'll just put some grease on grease on them and then I can basically um, install them up into the mounts there and just I've just cleaned up these bolts so they're just the existing bolts so I just wire wheeled them up so I'll chuck that together okay so just the bottom control arm is now fitted I've just tightened up the pivot bolts there. So yeah, it was a little bit awkward to try and get in and get the bolt holes to line up, but yeah, it just takes a little bit of manipulating um, and sort of use like a, you know, screwdriver to try and line them up. But yeah, got there in the end, so all good. Okay, so I'm just at the point now of needing to install the spindle onto the control arms. So I've just cleaned up the old spindle and coated with KBS. So just wire wheeled it back um, and brushed the KBS on. So it actually turned out pretty well. You can't see any brush marks or anything. So yeah, it works, works pretty good brushing it on as well. But anyway, I'm not gonna install the spindle on yet because 
I'm going to install all the brake components onto the spindle before I install the spindle. So I've got everything all laid out here to install. So you will need basically a torque wrench and also some red Loctite as well. So it does say in there use 271, but I've just got this 263 because they didn't have 271. So yeah, which is, it, it'll be fine. It's a high strength red Loctite. Okay, so the first step is fitting the wheel studs to the hub. So there is actually two stud patterns. So to check the correct stud pattern for your wheel then just put yeah basically put it up against your wheel and, and select the, the right one so yeah basically put all your five studs in and then you need to torque it to 77 foot pound it's a little bit awkward to torque but i found the best way is just to put it in a vise um, just with some cardboard to protect the wheel studs and then you can you know tighten two up and then rotate it and then tighten another two up Okay, so the next step now will be to install the inner bearing, so the bigger one of the two. So you need to pack it with grease first, and then basically after that, you can install the grease seal. So just got some high temperature bearing grease, so I'll pack that. Okay, so basically to pack the bearing, it's not rocket science, don't need no fancy bearing packers or anything like that. Just got to basically get up in that greasy bitch and get amongst it. So basically grab like a good dollop of grease and put it on your palm of your hand and then basically grab the bearing and then just do these ones. Um, and it should, you should see it come out the, the top here. Um, and then you just basically work your way around. So keep doing that until you see grease coming out the top and then you just work your way around. Simple as that. Okay, so the bearing goes into the cone and then you've just got the grease seal. So the lip faces inwards. So just like that. Okay, so that seals in. So just basically tap it till it's flush here. I just had to use like a plate to put over there and then sort of tap in the middle to, to get it started. Cause yeah, if you try and tap it on the edges, it just keeps um, flicking out. So yeah, get it square with a bit of plate and it went in. Okay, so the next step will be mounting the rotor to the adapter. So the adapter has got uh, basically this part here that protrudes. So you want that sort of pointing upwards like that. And then the rotor, has got some tabs. So you want the tabs basically on this uh, face here to be flush and then that mounts basically like that. So the protruding part is sticking up into the rotor. Okay, so next step will be fitting these bolts. So these are the bolts supplied in the kit. So apply a bit of Loctite, Loctite to each thread and then screw them down into the adapter. Okay, so that's bolted in. So I've just talked it down to 25 foot pound and you just basically go opposites and yeah, go around and talk it to 25 foot pound. So now I can basically mount this piece to the hub. So that hub basically sits in there like that, but you just basically put it, put the hub down flat like that and then you can flip that over and fit that to the hub and then you've got access to the bolts to bolt them in. So there's these bolts here that come with the kit and also apply Loctite to the bolts. Okay, so next step will be to fit the spindle into the rotor assembly. So basically this goes into there. Okay, so once the spindle's 
in the rotor assembly you can then put in the outer bearing so i've already pre-greased this one so he just slips in there like so also got the washer and there's a little groove so that locates on the spindle like so and then the castle nut and then basically you can set the preload but i won't do that till it's actually on the car okay so i've just tightened that castle nut on i'll just put this cap on just to keep it clean but just have to remember to set your preload later on okay so now i can mount the brake pads so these brake pads there's uh two little holes so they go up into the caliper and then this clip slides out so there's a bolt bolt there that you unscrew and then this clip slides out and then you can slide the pads onto onto that clip there and then you can slide that back and then that just clips back over like that so then that's your pads installed and then obviously you need to put the screw back in okay so next step will be fit the bracket to the caliper so this is the bracket supplied by castle main so basically that just sits on there like that and then you got these mounting bolts supplied as well and just screw them on okay so now this caliper is ready to mount to the spindle so got the pads in there so obviously the disc goes in between um, and then also these spaces are being supplied by the rod shop so basically yeah make sure them spaces in between this bracket and the spindle so yeah we'll mount this together Okay, so then basically that should be all lined up and spin freely, which it does. So that is everything installed on the right hand side so pretty bloody happy with how that's turned out looks bloody awesome so i probably won't want to get it dirty now so anyway there's still some jobs left to do so got to set the uh, bearing preload got to set the ride height so basically with the ride height got to wait till the car's pretty much finished and at full weight and then put it on its wheels and then can set the ride height and your compression. These upper control arm pivot bushes I've left loose. So basically you leave them loose until you set the ride height and then you tighten them up after that. So I still got to do that at the end. Got to grease these ball joints, up, uh, upper and lower ball joints. And then also what I'll do is I'm just gonna go over all the, the bolts and nuts and just make sure everything is tight so you know being brakes um suspension and steering components just yeah ma got to make sure that you don't miss any bolts so i'll go over the whole lot again and just make sure everything's tight okay so now we'll just put the other side together okay so both sides are done this side definitely was a lot quicker than the other side especially without having to film and yeah once you get one side done you just smash through the second side so it probably took about an hour hour and a half to put all that together so it's actually yeah pretty easy to put it all together to be honest so so now i'm at the point of 
fitting, I can fit up all the steering linkages um, just as they come off, but I'm sort of deciding at the moment whether I should fit a rack and pinion steering kit to it. So if anyone does have any opinions or thoughts on the rack and pinion steering kits for these things, then let me know in the comments. I just don't know whether it's worth spending the money on it and whether, you know, it improves the steering that much. So yeah, if anyone's got any opinions, just let me know. Okay, so that's it for today's video, guys. I uh, hope this gives you a pretty good idea of how to fit the tubular control arms and the wheelwood brakes from the Castle Main Rod Shop. So yeah, thanks for watching, and if you got something out of this video, hit that like and subscribe button below, and appreciate the support so far. So yeah, we'll see you on the next episode. Cheers.